Let's briefly look back at our task. Depending on the defined requirements, device feeder 1 is to open the circuit breaker in feeder 1. Then the device is to send a signal to close the coupling on device coupling. To implement the switch over, we configure additional functions for the device feeder 1. To begin with, we'll give you a brief overview of what these functions must accomplish. Basic cause for the switchover is an energy failure on the line side. To get the necessary information about it, the voltage value on bus bar section 1 is compared to a lower limiting value. Falling below this value starts a timer. This timer prevents even short voltage dips from leading to a switchover. If the voltage is still below the limiting value after the set time has run out, the timer output delivers a high signal. The continuous falling below the limiting value is the first of three requirements that must be fulfilled for the switchover. Second requirement, the automatic switchover must be activated. Remember, you activate or deactivate the automatic switchover with the two function keys F1 and F2. To query the status of the automatic switchover, we link two indications ASO ON and ASO OFF with an SR flip-flop. A high signal at the output of the flip-flop then means that the automatic switchover is activated. The third requirement is that there is no error on the bus bar. An indication which always exists when there is a trip gives you information about this. In order to be able to save this information, we link this indication with a set input of an SR flip-flop. The flip-flop is reset as soon as the trip is acknowledged. To retain a high signal when no trip exists, we have to negate the output signal of the flip-flop. Since all three described requirements must be fulfilled simultaneously, we link the three signals with an AND function. A high signal at the output of the AND function thus means an ENABLE for the switchover. By the way, we'll distribute the procedures shown in two functions. The reason for this is that you have to clearly assign each CFC function to one of four tasks. The task decides whether a function is executed cyclically or event-triggered. Function 1 is a measured value task that is to be executed cyclically. Consequently, we assign this function to the task measurement. Function 2, on the other hand, is determined by events. The optimum task for this is called event-triggered fast. But back to our example. With the first two functions, we capture the current situation and, if necessary, generate from it an enable indication. The actual switchover is carried out by a third function. As soon as the enable indication exists, this function gives the command to open the circuit breaker in feeder 1. After a positive response, the function generates the indication close coupling in device coupling. Every function is configured within a function chart. To add a new function chart, simply double-click on Add New Chart. In the follow-up dialog, enter a name for the function chart, for example, Voltage Monitoring. Next, select the task execution level. Since the first function is a measured value task, you have to assign the function chart to the task measurement. Check the checkbox Add and Open and click OK. Dixie 5 opens the empty function chart in the working area. Without programming knowledge, you now create the desired function with the help of the function chart editor. In so doing, you can fall back on a wide variety of existing function blocks which are compiled, clearly structured, in the library. To determine whether the bus bar is without voltage, we compare the current voltage value with a lower limiting value. For that, we need a compare block. 
Simply drag the compare block out of the library and place it within the chart. You can change the limiting value with which the voltage value is to be compared directly at the block's input limit. You have to interconnect the second input of the function block with the voltage measured value. For this, display the signal catalog. Make sure that the signals of device feeder 1 are visible. Then select the required measured value and drag it onto the input of the block. As soon as you let go of the mouse button, Dixie 5 displays the interconnected signal in the form of a connector. The first function monitors whether the voltage falls below a limiting value. The second function enables the switchover dependent on the voltage falling below and two other requirements. Add a second function chart with the name voltage switchover. Select the task event triggered fast. You first of all have to reopen the global Dixie 5 library. From the library, drag the required blocks onto the function chart, a timer, two SR flip-flops, and an AND block. As you can see, the AND block only has two inputs by default. Since the number of inputs is a parameterizable property of the block, you can easily increase it to 3. Then set the runtime of the timer to 5 seconds. Since Dixie 5 expects the input in milliseconds, enter the value 5000. Now connect the blocks with one another, as you've already done with the first function. After that, negate the output signal of the second flip-flop. You do this quite easily with the context menu of the connection line. You must now define and route the required indications. Use the information matrix for this. Insert the user-defined indications from the library into the desired location in the information matrix using drag and drop. We'll show you this using the indication ASO on as an example. For this indication, select the signal type single point indication SPS. As the target for this indication, choose for example the function trip logic within the function group circuit breaker. Now drag the signal from the library onto the function in the information matrix. You can easily change the standard name now, in our example, into the name ASO ON. This way you add the other required indications. Now route the indications ASO ON and ASO OFF to the function keys F1 or F2. You take care of this quite easily with the context menu. Simply right-click in the common cell of Indication and Function Key and select the desired routing. And there you go, the indication is linked to the Function Key. Now all you have to do is define the indication Close Coupling in Device Coupling. For this, open the information matrix of this device. When you define the indication, you proceed just as you did when you defined the indications for the device Feeder 1. Now link the blocks of the second function with all required indications. By the way, you will also now find the newly defined indications in the signal catalog, in our case within the function group circuit breaker in the function trip logic. Select an indication and drag it as already shown onto the appropriate block connection. In this way you also connect the other indications with the function blocks. With that, the second function is also completed. You now connect it with the first function. The actual switchover is carried out by a third function. On the output side, the function is to generate the indication close coupling in device coupling. So far you have already fulfilled all requirements for a cross communication. For that reason, you can now quite easily link the function in device feeder 1 
with the help of the signal catalog with a signal from device coupling. There is nothing else you have to do for a functioning cross-communication between the two devices. Thank you.